Hello and welcome to What The Hey, where I'm your regular host of What The Hey, and today on What The Hey, I'm once again reacting to yet another requested video. Today's video request comes from i7887, so hello to you and thank you very much for requesting today's video. The content in question that I'm checking out today is titled The Complete Fun to Imagine with Richard Feynman, which was uploaded on November 1st of 2018. The video duration is 1 hour, 6 minutes, and 49 seconds, and the video description gives a brief history on Richard Feynman, as well as a compilation of timestamps for the video's segments. The video itself was uploaded by Christopher Sykes, so hello to you and thank you very much for creating and releasing your work. Like with all of my reaction videos, if there's something in this specific video that I feel may disturb someone to some degree, I'll be sure to mention that in the video description, so feel free to check that out before watching the rest of the video. As a quick note beforehand, this video will probably not be the whole 1 hour, 6 minutes, and 49 seconds. I may chop it down to the main segments that I actually give commentary on, and I'll also give commentary afterwards, uh, but this video may be shorter, so if you actually want to watch the whole video, I always have the links to the videos that I react to in the description, so feel free to just watch the video if you actually want to see what it's fully about. But with all of that out of the way, let's actually watch the video itself. This kind of seems like Monty Python-esque. I know that's not the case. I also don't really know who this is, so I'm interested to see what it's about. It's interesting that some people find science uh, so easy and others <laughs> find it kind of dull and difficult. Difficult, yes. Especially kids, you know, some of them are just eat it up. Not me. And I don't know why it is. It's the same perhaps for all subjects. For instance, lots of people love music. And same, I yes. Carry a tune. You don't right? have to carry a tune. You just have That's, to listen I to it. Lose a great deal of pleasure out of that. Mm. And I think people lose a lot of pleasure who find science dull. Just difficult for me, In really. In case of science, you think that one of the things that make it very difficult is it takes a lot of imagination. It's very I'm hard creative, to imagine bro. all the crazy things that things really are like. There's a <laughs> jiggling atoms. There's a lot of weird concepts in science, though, so I guess. Nothing's really as it seems. We're used to get, you know, hot and cold, and all that hot and cold is is the speeds that the atoms are jiggling. If they jiggle more, it corresponds to hotter, and colder is jiggling less. So if you have uh, a bunch of atoms, a cup of coffee or something. I love coffee. On, That's relevant to me, yes. Heat, we say, goes into mm -hmm. the cold thing. It spreads. That kind of makes sense. But what's spreading is just jiggling and irregular motions. Jiggling, okay. Which is easy to kind of understand. Yeah, uh, that makes it, sense. It brings up another thing that's kind of curious. Whereas if you heat that harder, then they begin to get loose and roll and all over each the other. the vapor. And that's the liquid. And if you liquid. heat that then it's the and they bounce harder, then they the simply same. bounce apart from each other and they're just individual. Yes, okay. I say atoms, it's really little groups of atoms, molecules which come flying and hit, and although they have a tendency to stick, they're moving too fast, their hands don't grab, so to speak, as they pass, hmm. and they fly apart again, and this is the gas we call gas. steam. Gas, yeah, steam, okay. Then atoms which are coming fast at the piston feel a receding or a sort of a give, it gives, and it comes out with less energy. It's like going up against something which is soft and yielding. It goes boom, boom, and it loses. So as you pull the piston out, Love to have the, sounds. the atoms are hit, they lose their speed and they cool off. And gases cool when they expand. Yes, okay. And the fun of it is that all these things which you see or you notice in the world about it, mm -hmm. the pump heats the gas. And yes, the gas it all works together. Expands, or the steam evaporates until you cover the cover. And all these things you can understand from these simple pictures. Mm. And that's kind of a, a lot of fun to think about. I don't want to take this stuff seriously. I think we should just have fun imagining it, yeah. not worry about it. There's no teacher going to ask you questions at the end. Otherwise, it's a horrible subject. Exactly, yes. When you make it unenjoyable, that's when it's hard. And they jiggle, and they make mothers jiggle, and you get a terrible catastrophe. Fire. one after the other. All these things are going faster and faster and snapping in, and the whole thing is changing. That catastrophe is a fire. Yes, okay. It's just a way of looking at it. And these mm. things are happening. They perpetual. Once it gets started, it keeps on going. The heat makes the other atoms capable of reaching to make more heat to make other atoms and so on. So this terrible mm. snapping is producing a lot of jiggling. And if I put, with all that activity of the atoms there, and I put a cup of coffee over that, 
massive wood. You're really hot. It's doing this, it's going to get a lot of jiggling. So yes. That's what the heat of the fire is. And then, of course, uh, if you see, this is what happens when you start to think. You just go on and on. What the go world? on many different tangents, yes. How did it get started? Why is it that the wood's been sitting around all this time with the oxygen all this time? Water comes out of the ground, you see. Only it had to get in there. It came out of the air. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the sky. So in fact, most of a tree, almost all of a tree is out of the ground. Hmm. I'm sorry. If you say that air. out of context, it's that's a weird. From the ground, some minerals and so forth. And they, there's all the oxygen made by these trees. And all the carbon would, would be much prefer to be close together again. I like the and way he talks. Got, Very heat, interesting. To get it started, it continues and makes an awful lot of activity while it's going back together again. And all this nice light and everything comes out. And everything is being undone. You're going back from carbon and oxygen back to carbon dioxide. And the light and heat that's coming out, that's the light and heat of the sun that went in. It's all actions, huh? So it's sort of stored sun that's coming out. When you Gotta in, like empower yeah. the power of the sun. Next question. How is it the sun is so jiggly, so hot? Because it's heat. I gotta stop somewhere. <laughs> I'll leave you something to imagine. Uh. I love how you can tell how excited he is with what he discusses. That's cool. So if you heat a rubber band, it'll pull strong, more strongly, for instance. If you hang a weight with a rubber band and put a little match to it, it's kind of fun to watch it rise the way it heats more. And Does there's it another do thing that? You can check that this idea is right, that it's heat that drives a rubber band. you pull it? If you pull the band out, just like when we push the piston and the gas, if you pull the band out, the tightening string hitting those molecules makes them move faster, and so it's warmer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And if you take the band and let it in, then the molecules hitting the strings, which sort and of give hot? as the thing hits it, they, they give in to the soft like, and they lose energy when they hit these retiring band, uh, string, strings. So it cools. Oh, okay, that makes sense. There's a way you can do this. You're not very sensitive. It's a small effect. And if you take a you let it go. wide rubber band and put it between your lips and pull it out, Ow. you'll certainly notice it's hotter. And if you then hold it out there and let it in, you'll notice it's cooler. At least you'll notice a certain Just difference. Just because of the action, I guess. When you expand it when you contract it. What is it, the feeling between those two magnets? What do you mean, what's the feeling between well, the two magnets? The there. attraction. I mean, that, the sensation yes. is that there's something there when you push these two magnets together. Listen to my question. What is the meaning when you say that there's, that there's a feeling? Of course you feel it. Now, what do you want to know? What I want to know is what's what going is on. What is that, yeah? The between these two, bits, these two bits of metal. The magnets repel each other. And, well, then what does, that, but what does that mean, or why are they doing that, or how are they doing it? I don't know. Uh, you ask. I, I, I must say, I think that's a perfectly reasonable question. Yes. Of course, it's, a yes. it's an excellent question. Okay. Then answer it, bro. And so you begin to get a very interesting understanding of the world and all its complications. And in order to, to, if you try to follow anything up, you go deeper and deeper in various directions. If, for example, you could go, well, why did she slip on the ice? Well, ice is slippery. Everybody knows that. No problem. Mm -hmm. But you ask, why is ice slippery? Because. That's kind of curious. Ice is Melting extremely ice. slippery. It's very interesting. And then you're involved with something because there aren't many things as slippery as ice. It's very hard to get greasy stuff, but that's bananas sort of are but a slippery. Solid, that's so slippery. Banana, it's banana. In the case of ice, that when you stand on it, they say momentarily the pressure melts the ice a little bit into so water. Got a sort of instantaneous water surface on which you're slipping. Yes. But at an early level, I just have to, have to tell you that's going to be one of the things you'll just have to take as an element in the world, the existence of magnetic repulsion or electrical. I can't question it, bro. That sounds about right. Protection. If you were curious enough, you'd ask me why rubber bands tend to pull back together again, and I would end up explaining that in terms of electrical forces. That's too forces, much. It's which are the very things that I'm trying to use the rubber bands to explain, yeah. so I have cheated very badly, you see. But I really can't do a good job any job of explaining magnetic force in terms of something else that you're more familiar with because I don't understand it in terms of anything else that you're more familiar with. Hmm. That's deep. Hashtag deep, bro. Man, magnets do be complicated. This stuff of fantasizing and looking at the world 
imagining things, which really isn't fantasizing because you're only trying to imagine the way it really is, it comes in handy sometimes. The other day I was at the dentist and he's getting ready with his electric drill to make holes. For fillings, I'm guessing. I better think of something fast or else uh, it's going to hurt. Yep, that's how that goes. And then I thought about this little motor going around and what was it that made it turn? I got to think through the pain. I like to think about a lot. He likes to think in general. It's copper and iron. See, sometimes we think it's a man-made generator. It's very complicated. The phenomenon is a result of some special something that we made. But it's nature doing it. You realize what a fantastic mystery nature is. It's very complicated, and I don't do complicated. R.I.P. You need the iron. You could, if you at least get this pump prime, primed and started, by jiggling <laughs> copper strands around jiggle, fast jiggle, enough, jiggle. knotting them and nice. unknotting them and so forth, you can get other copper strands to move at the other end of a long connection. Well, it's, it's, the numbers are too big. So, if uh, got to get also, comfortable, however, by the way. electrical things, and that we find mysterious, and that we need an explanation for. Yes. We always have to have answers for some reason. We try to find an explanation for it in terms of ideas like the forces that are inside of rubber bands or steel bars or or twisted things. We would like to have some kind of puller at a distance because we're used to it, that we don't get any push until we're touching. That the fact is that the reason we don't get any push until we're touching is it's the same force as you see at a long distance, only it's come down to short because the pluses and minuses have canceled out so well that you don't feel anything until it gets very, very close that we have to accept as the base reality in which we're going to explain all the other Mm. things. So again, it turns out it's hard to understand. You have to do a lot of imagining. That the real world has as as its base a force which acts at a long distance. The existence of these long forces and these rapid motion actions and so forth was a tremendous thing for human beings. It's I all connected, <laughs> unfortunately. And the electromagnetic effects, which uh, were finally worked out, the full equations for everything was worked out by Maxwell in 1873. is probably the most fundamental transformation of uh, the most remarkable thing in history, the biggest change in history. Hmm. Being able to comprehend these things is the biggest accomplishment in history i, I assume I went to a scientific school mit duh you're and super smart that makes sense when you first join they try to make you do you stupid being, stuff if you think you're smart from being too feeling that you're too smart that's a good idea by giving you what look like simple questions to try to figure out what actually happens and it's like training for imagination you know it's a, it's kind of fun and i thought i'd i tell you some of them that i remember unsolvable I them. Course, questions once you learn them The next time somebody comes along with this wonderful puzzle, you look at them kind of quietly. You wait two or three seconds or five seconds to show whiz that you were thinking. And then you come up with this answer to astonish your friends. But the fact was, of course, that you were trained by your fraternity brothers as to how to answer these things early on. Whereas the up and down, which look okay, was the right and left before. And the mirror somehow figured out what you're going to do when you're looking at it. I would never be able to join this fraternity. In a symmetrical way, what a mirror does that it doesn't look lopsided. It's, it's just reflective, it right? Up right, and it doesn't do the same with up and down. Whoever made and that, that's what keeps it bro. on the track also the same way. Suppose a train's running along on this thing. I'm glad people are smart. The <laughs> in, and the two wheels are exactly balanced, and it's nice and even. Well, we had a lot of stuff like that that Ooh. we had to learn. You know, that would get straightened out before we could yeah. become full-fledged members of the fraternity. Goodness gracious. I would never know that. Learn something new every day, I guess. Uh, it's quite wonderful that we can see, figure out so easy. <laughs> That's really mm. because the light waves are easier than the, the waves in the water, a little bit more complicated. It would have been harder for the bug than for us, but it's the same idea, to figure out what the thing is that we're looking at at a distance. Hmm. And this is kind of incredible because when I'm looking at you, someone standing to my left can see somebody who's standing at my right. That is, the light could be going right across this way. The waves are going this way. The waves are going this way. The waves are going this way. It's just a complete network. Now, it's easy to think of them as arrows passing each other. 
But that's not the way it is, because all it is is something shaking. It's called the electric field, but we don't have to bother with what it is. It's yeah, just like please, no. Going up and down. <laughs> Too much. So some quantities shaking about here by the fact that there are influences that represent the other guy seeing him on this side. I so see you, you see me. So tremendous mess yes. of waves all over in space, space. Which, we call, which is the light bouncing around the room and going from one thing to the other. All the Why radio is that waves connected? are just the what? same kind of waves, only longer waves. And there's the radar from the airplane, which is looking at the ground to figure out where it is, which is coming through this room at the same time. Plus the X-rays, <laughs> cosmic It's rays, all connected. Waves, the same kind of Bro. waves, exactly the same waves, but shorter, faster, or longer, slower. It's exactly the same thing. So this big field, this, this of area of irregular motions of this electric field, this vibration, but that all these things are going through the room at the same time. At the same time, 24-7. you got to stop and think about it. No, I, what if I don't want to? About the complexity, the inconceivable nature of nature. Yes, that's a good quote. Nature of nature, yes. Does this dude's brain never stop thinking? Does he ever get, like, headaches? About the atoms. One of the trouble that people have with the atoms is... That they're so tiny and it's so hard to you imagine can't see the scale. Them. I'm an anti-atom uh, believer. The size of the atoms are in size. Compared to an apple, it's the same scale as an apple is to the size of the earth. And that's a kind of a hard thing to take. And you have to no, go that makes all sense. all the time. And people find these numbers inconceivable. And I do too. See, at many times in science, by using imagination, you've imagined something which could be, according to all the known knowledge of the laws, and you don't know whether it is yet or not. And that's very interesting. There's a creative imagination, you like to call it, not just imagining things that are relatively easy, but something different. And to take an example of a star, as we understand it, the ordinary star like the sun is a great big ball of gas of hydrogen. Yes, it's, it's big. Up the hydrogen and so forth. And, it's and we're all going to blow up from it. Yay. It's held together by gravity. Thankfully, but yes. You don't have to always understand gravity as curved space. It's good enough for this purpose that force inversely is square of the distance. When things are closer together, the force is stronger. And it pulls everything Greater together. Greater numbers, yes. By the way, that's why the world is round. Oh. Because the globe of Earth is pulled together as by much gravity. as possible. And if it had a great mountain and an irregularity of a bump or something, it would be pulled in by gravity and it all gets smooth. And at first, that's very mysterious. You're used to stars being big and slow. Yes. And how can anything in a star move in a 30th of a second? Well, these things are very small neutron stars, and they're spinning very fast. <sighs> Always with the and spinning and the wiggling and the they're jiggling. A beam of radio waves, like a searchlight in an airport or something. And those things go around, boop, boop, boop. So we get the flashes. Boop, 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 boop. That fast. To imagine a star, the mass of the sun, doing something, turning so fast as 30 times a second. There's another one of these big number. Hard to conceive, imagine. And that's why we don't okay, conceive it. That's why we don't do it. That there could be a star of such enormous density that a teaspoon would weigh so much that if, of the matter that if you put it down on the Earth's surface, it's so heavy it'll just plow right through to the center of the Earth. You ask me if an ordinary person, by studying hard, would get to be able to imagine these things like I imagine. Of course. Oh. I was an ordinary person who studied hard. I'm that's not good. Good people. <laughs> It just happens they got interested in this thing and they learned all this stuff. True. They're just people. There's no talent, a special miracle ability to understand quantum mechanics or a miracle ability to imagine electromagnetic fields that comes without practice and reading and learning and study. So if you say you take an ordinary person who's willing to devote a great deal of time and study and work and thinking and mathematics and time and then he's become a scientist. Yeah. Put in the effort, bro. And I was putting the socks out, and I had to make a list how many socks, and it was something like six or eight socks, and I couldn't count them. <laughs> because the counting machine was being used, and I couldn't count them. Until I found out I could put them in a pattern and recognize the number. Hmm. So I learned a way, after practicing, by which I could go down a lines of type in newspapers and see them in groups 3331, three, three, that's a group of 10, 3331, three, three, without saying That's numbers, too complicated with doing socks. I could therefore count the lines of type I practiced. In the newspaper, the same time I was counting internally, the seconds. And so I would come, I could do this fantastic trick of saying, 
48. That's a one minute, and there are 67 lines of type, you see. Oh, my gosh. Wonderful. Dude is complicated and for fun. Many things I could read while I was... Uh, no, I... Excuse me. Yes. Yes, I could read perfectly all right while I was counting. And then we compared notes, and it turned out that when he thought of counting, what he did inside his head when he counted was he saw a tape with numbers that when clink, 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 the tape would change with the numbers printed on it, he could see. Well, since it's sort of an optical system that he's using and not voice, he could speak kind as of much person. as he wanted. But yep. if he had to read, then he couldn't look at his Difficult. clock. Difficult, yeah, yeah. Whereas for me, it was the other way. And that's where I discovered, at least in this very simple operation of counting, the great difference mm -hmm. in what goes on in the head yes. when people think they're doing the same thing. Completely different. Yeah. And so it struck me, therefore, if that's already true at the most elementary level, that when we learn the mathematics and the Bessel functions and the exponentials and the electric fields and all these things, that the imageries and method by which we're storing it all and the way we are different. Yep, very unique. Could be really, if we could get into each other's heads, entirely different. Mm -hmm. And in fact, why somebody sometimes has a great deal of difficulty understanding a point which you see as obvious, mm -hmm. vice versa, it may be because it's a little hard to translate what you just said into his particular framework and so on. Now I'm talking like a psychologist, as you know, I know nothing about this. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. the question is whether you could get to know what why things, things do, do. better than we do today. You know, as the generations develop, will they invent ways of teaching and way so that the new people understand will learn the tricky ways of looking at things Ugh, and be the so very trained, complicated so well things trained, that they won't have our troubles with the atom uh, picturing hmm. there's still a school of thought that cannot believe that the atomic behavior is so different than large scale behavior i think that's a deep prejudice it's a prejudice from being so used to large scale behavior and they're always seeking to find, to waiting for the day that we discover that underneath the quantum mechanics, there's some mundane, ordinary balls hitting or particles moving and so on. I think they're going to be defeated. I think nature's imagination is so much greater than man's, she's never going to let us relax. We don't need to understand everything because everything's so complicated. Goodness. Oh, it's just, it just, it keeps going with the credits. Goodness gracious. That's a lot of words, a lot of fancy science, a lot of stuff I don't understand, which is tough. 10 out of 10 though. Wow. I tell you what, I really did not comprehend half of that. I definitely took like astronomy and science classes when I was younger in middle and high school, but still some of that is new and very confusing to me. Which I did really like one of the concepts that he pointed out where he was saying one person can understand a concept extremely well while another person doesn't get it at all. As an example, I'm someone who enjoys history and I can like interpret stuff and understand things while my friend who's super good at science and math is super good at that stuff, but I'm not. So we kind of get a trade off and we work off of each other. So not only were his general explanations of certain concepts very interesting, but the way he explained how people understand and kind of understand the concepts in general was really cool. Another statement they made in the video that I could kind of relate to was when they were saying that people who are super smart in a certain subject or area are only smart because they actually studied it. They didn't like automatically become smart and super well versed in that area. They just took an interest in that thing which it's difficult in kind of the educational sense because a lot of people through their educational career are put into areas that they have no interest in. So it kind of makes education kind of hard for them in some areas. Overall, there were a lot of concepts in that video that I did not really understand and I don't think I want to understand. I'm gonna leave the smart sciencey people to understand that stuff. But I did really enjoy the way they kind of explained the different concepts and I really enjoyed their kind of emotion and passion for explaining the subjects. You can actually tell when someone is truly passionate about something they're discussing because whether that's their facial expressions or the tone of their voice will be very evident to you as like someone who's observing someone speaking and you could really tell that he was really excited about pretty much everything that he was bringing up. 
So although half of my commentary throughout this video was me saying what or huh, I still enjoyed it for the aspect of like seeing how he explained everything. I also liked how he kind of automatically looked like a smart kind of sciencey dude. His hair kind of looked like an evil scientist and he had like a pen pocket protector so I automatically was like this is a smart dude. I also like the technique that he used with including personal stories, like there was the whole section about being in a fraternity and having to answer really weird questions. But there was also the segment that was going along with the generator where he was talking initially about getting like teeth fillings because he had to have like a drill and the drill was powered by certain mechanics so he went into it that way but I kind of liked having the personal aspect included in it as well. So overall, my mind kind of feels fried, but that was very good and educational. Very nice. So that's essentially the reaction video, and if you have anything that you would like for me to check out, let me know and I'll get to watching it as soon as I can, but that's about it. So thank you very much for watching. Bye!